We've all probably wondered whether or not we could face up against some of horror's most iconic villains, but today we're more interested in whether or not we could face off against them in a Pokemon battle. What Pokemon would our favorite horror movie villains have on their team? Let's find out. First up, we have Norman Bates from Psycho. We all go a little mad sometimes, and that goes for Pokemon too. For his understanding of this affliction, we think Psyduck makes a perfect Pokemon for Norman, and there is also some resemblance between the two. Our second pick for him is Cubone. At the risk of spoiling one of the biggest twists in horror movie history, we'll just say that this is about dead mothers. Cubones cry over their departed mothers, and Norman, well, he kills over his. It's also rumored that the skulls that Cubones wear over their head are the skulls of their mom, so the correlation with Norman Bates is pretty strong. Our third and final pick for his team is Marshadow. Although Norman isn't the villain with the spookiest aesthetic on the list, we felt like Marshadow was a good pick because it also takes its power from mimicry. Norman is at his most dangerous when he's channeling his mom, so it's something they have in common. Now we move on to Carrie White from Stephen King's classic, Carrie. While not a villain in a traditional sense, we felt the need to include Carrie as one of our more promising young trainers. We felt like Cyndaquil was the perfect starter for Miss White, because not only is it a fire type, but it's young and coming into its powers. That was a big part of her story, and one of the reasons why we sympathize with this protagonist turned killer. Our second pick for her is Magmar. Again, there's the obvious draw that this is a fire type, but the Pokedex entry for Magmar suggests that the Pokemon feels some regret for instantly burning its victims. While regret may not be the exact emotion Carrie feels, we know that the fire was not her initial intention, since we feel the fire and subsequent massacre could have been avoided with proper guidance. We're actually going to take this moment to announce our third and most optimistic pick, Gardevoir. This psychic type Pokemon is empathetic and could have really helped Carrie avoid some catastrophes had she been its trainer at the time, especially with how protective they get. Rounding out her team is Chimeco, another psychic type Pokemon whose powers erupt when they become enraged. This is sadly a little more realistic to the arc of the movie, and this is not a Pokemon you want to try to prank with pig's blood. Following Carrie is another somewhat sympathetic villain, Candyman from the classic film Candyman. This is one of our most aesthetically based choices, but we feel like we have to start with Beedrill. With no Pokemon available, he uses bees, similar to the bees that killed him, but we think if he had the chance to upgrade to a poisonous B-type Pokemon, he'd be insane not to take it. And even more B-themed goodness, our second pick is Combi. Since Candyman attacks with things that were used against him in his life, choosing a honey-making Pokemon makes sense, since his body was slathered in honey to attract the bees that ultimately stung him to death. Our third pick for him would be Victory Bell. Not only does this plant-type Pokemon emit the scent of honey, making it incredibly on-brand for the team, but it uses sweetness to lure its victims. This is very similar to how the Candyman already operates. Our fourth fourth pick sticks with the theme as well, Teddy Ursa, who makes its own honey. We think it would have a blast with all those bees. And finally, the last slot goes to Smeargle. While this deviates from the insect slash bee slash honey theme that we're establishing, we think it's a nice homage to give the painter Pokemon to our former artist. Even as the Candyman, art is a recurring motif in this slasher's day to day. Coming in with a small team of his own is Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Our first pick for this chainsaw wielding madman is Rattata. According to the Pokedex entry, Rattatas will chew on anything and seeing one of them implies there's more. Leatherface, a cannibal, is also guilty of eating just about anything that's put before him. He also has a large killer family as well, meaning that if you see him somewhere, he's probably not alone. Our second choice for him is Sandslash. Aside from the fact that a Sandslash's sharp claws may well rival the tearing capability of a chainsaw, this is just a practical decision. The Sandslash thrives in warm, dry climates, and we think it's the perfect Pokemon to do some killing with down in Texas. Our third and final pick for Leatherface is Golbat. It drinks blood and will sometimes share. This is great because Leatherface is capable, but not exactly what we'd call a provider or a forward thinker. 
Having a goal bat in his rotation is probably exactly what he needs in case he gets separated from his family. With one of our more diverse and surprising teams, we have Pinhead from Hellraiser. Our first pick for this needle-adorned lover of pain is Ninetales. They live long, which is perfect for an immortal villain, and their tails are rumored to be filled with supernatural powers. Our second pick for him is Croconaw. While this one may not seem obvious, we think the needle-thin hooks of the Croconaw's teeth would be a likely weapon for Pinhead, who has a history of hook summoning. This may well be a more intuitive Pokemon companion than one would initially guess. A more obvious choice may well be our third pick, Clang. We think the locking machinations of this Pokemon would be easy to solve for someone accustomed to the Lament configuration. For our fourth pick, we have Mesprit, aka the being of emotion. While you may not think of Pinhead as an emotional villain, it may help to know that the Pokedex entry credits the Mesprit for teaching humans pain, which we found incredibly fitting. We have the same line of thinking for our fifth and final slot, Gorgeist. Gorgeist's body emanates a sound that is believed to be the wailing of those suffering in the afterlife. Suffering which Pinhead would be happy to keep going. He'd probably like to hear it during battles as well. To not hear it would just be a waste of good suffering. Coming in with a full team is Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street. You'll probably notice a quick theme emerging with our entries, but hopefully you'll see our reasoning as well. First up is Jigglypuff, who will not stop singing until it lulls its opponents to sleep which is perfect for a dream demon like Freddy. Hypno is our second pick for a similarly convenient method of putting people to sleep. Our third slot goes to Abra, which has different abilities while in its sleep. Since Freddy could control the dreams of the Abra, which affects its powers, this is a terrifyingly effective Pokemon in Kruger's hands. Fourth slot goes to Darkrai, a Pokemon which also causes nightmares and its victims to help protect territory. We thought Freddy could use some help doling out more terrors in the dreamscape, before we announce his fifth Pokemon, Musharna. The dark mist emanating from this Pokemon's body can turn nightmares into reality, according to the Pokedex. So Freddy is just getting more powerful by the minute with his lineup. Fortunately, we're diverting from the theme of these Pokemon a little with our last pick for his team. It may surprise you that the sixth slot goes to Frostlass, and you may be wondering why we chose an Ice-type Pokemon that has nothing to do with dreams. The answer is that we think of Freddy as the most fun-loving villain on our list, and we thought he deserved a friend that would appreciate his color culinary efforts of soul eating. Following Freddy is his rival, Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. Our first pick for Jason is Grimer, a being made of congealed sludge. After getting stuck at the bottom of Crystal Lake for so long, there are a couple entries in the film franchise where Jason also looks like he is made of and or bleeding sludge. So we thought these two would have a lot in common. To keep him from getting stuck in the lake again, our second pick is actually Poliwag. We thought that this drowned child turned unstoppable killer could use a good swimmer on his team. Instead of choosing one that's also a better fighter, we chose the one whose innards can be seen. Again, we felt like this was very on brand for Jason aesthetically. In finding a Pokemon that more represents what Jason Voorhees is about at his core, his third and final Pokemon is going to be Rhyhorn. This is a Pokemon that the Pokedex describes as being strong, but not too bright. Sorry Jason fans, it's just how it is. Now we get to the iconic Michael Myers from Halloween. First off, we've chosen Marowak. Not only are they described as sturdy, but we felt like Michael may well appreciate a Pokemon who wears a mask as part of his identity. He can probably relate. We chose our second Pokemon for him in the same vein, Yamask. Our third choice for him is Vigoroth. Again, there are more obvious choices, but there was something about the relentless, restless determination of the Vigoroth to keep moving that reminds us of how Michael kills. In a more lighthearted and adorable twist, our fourth pick for him is Bidoof. Bidoof might look a little too cute to be the companion of someone so cold-hearted, but as the Pokedex states, Bidoof has nerves of steel and cannot be perturbed. Being more agile and active than it appears is also, strangely enough, something that could describe Michael himself. Our final selection for Mr. Myers is Noivern. And again, we would direct you to the Pokedex for our reasoning. Quote, aggressive and cruel, this Pokemon will ruthlessly torment enemies that are helpless in the dark, which is just perfect for Michael. Now we get to Samara Morgan from The Ring. 
Our first pick is mostly aesthetic, and that would be Haunter. Though the ghost type plays quite well to Samara's strength, we'll admit that this is more about looks than abilities. The shaking constantly before death is promising, but keep in mind that it's from poison rather than fear, which would have been more accurate. Our second choice for the team is actually Miss Magius, a Pokemon ghost that is feared for its ability to curse. Continuing the string of thematically relevant picks, we also have Starmie, who was selected of course for potent psychic powers, not unlike Samara's. Our fourth Pokemon selection for Miss Morgan is Esper. In addition to devastating psychic powers, Esper shares Samara's emotionless gaze, making these two a perfect, albeit terrifying match. Our fifth and final selection for Samara's team, LGM. Because of course, right? This Pokemon has the ability to share images from its home by just standing next to a TV screen, which is basically just a less lethal version of Samara's killer videotape. Even if you survive the battle with this lineup, you might want to schedule someone to check on you after seven days. While we're on the topic of supernatural killers, let's move on to Pennywise from Stephen King's It. You can picture whichever version you want, but know that we're picturing Tim Curry. Our first pick for him is Mr. Mime because it couldn't have been anything else, right? Our second Pokemon companion for Pennywise is Ditto, whose shape-shifting abilities would undoubtedly be used to horrific effect. The third pick is Duskull, who has a habit of stealing away bad children from their parents. We're not saying the Losers Club is bad, but they did break their fair share of rules. In a decision King fans are probably going to be mad at us for, our fourth pick is Drifloon. It's not just that Drifloon will approach kids, it's that Drifloon runs away when they play too rough. Though there was ultimately a big showdown with Pennywise, it was pretty easy to keep him at bay until the movie's finale, something we think Drifloon would be able to sympathize with. Our fifth spot goes to Carnivine, for the way it lures victims in before chomping down and slowly feeding off of them, much like our dancing clown. And honestly, that's pretty terrifying. Our sixth and final place goes to Watchog, for its glowing eyes and ability to stun. Deadlights, anyone? Our second to last villain today is Dr. Hannibal Lecter from The Silence of the Lambs. The first Pokemon we would bestow onto this sophisticated cannibal is Hariyama who is described as valuing etiquette. His second Pokemon is Altaria. This is a lesser seen and highly sought after Pokemon that we think would be perfect for a collector with an appreciation for beauty. The way Altaria brings in an audience for the song is reminiscent of Hannibal's own smooth charm, albeit less deadly. The third pick is Melodic who we've actually chosen for similar reasons. It's described as being the most beautiful of Pokemon and inspiration for many artists. Whether or not you're charmed by this cannibal, you have to admit he is quite skilled as an artist. The fourth and final Pokemon for Dr. Lecter's team is Arachnid, mainly for the way it savors its meals probably with a nice Chianti. Our last villain of the day is Jigsaw from Saw. This one is also open to some interpretation, but we're sticking with the OG John Kramer. We'll start with our least obvious pick of Pokemon, which is Claydol. We think that a Pokemon who began as a clay figure would be a perfect stand-in for Billy the Puppet. The original Billy was also crafted as something that eventually took on a life of its own as the face of these traps. Our second pick is Porygon, who we think is the perfect Pokemon for any dedicated engineer. You could potentially make a case that the less stable Porygon 2 is more likely to be involved with such deadly schemes, but we just didn't feel comfortable adding that element of surprise to the team. The third spot goes to Klefki, who is known for keeping track of important keys. This is something that would really help anyone carrying a lot of keys to different, specific, and potentially life-saving locks. And our fourth and final slot goes to Corefish. And for one final time, we would like to quote the Pokedex for context. Corefish is described as having, quote, a strong will to survive. And at the end of the day, that's the piece of the puzzle that matters most to any Jigsaw worth their title. And that's it, Pokemon teams for our favorite horror movie villains. But let us know in the comment section if you thought a Pokemon would be better for any of these killers. Make sure to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos.